All right, we are going to move on to chapter 25 and do just a quick little blip uh, on organic chemistry. So we are not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about organic chemistry. I want to review what we talked about last year in regular chemistry and give you a little preview of any vocabulary you might possibly see on the AP exam. So organic chemistry, here's your refresher. Remember, organic chemistry is the chemistry of carbon compounds. If we are to make the periodic table of organic chemistry, it would essentially consist of three elements, carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, because carbon has the, uh, for four free electrons, it has the ability to form really long chains. And without this property, uh, molecules which your entire body depends on, such as proteins, lipids, which are fats, carbohydrates, and nucleic acids, can form. All right, we find three geometries in organic compounds, tetrahedral, trigonal, planar, and linear. And we have four basic types. We have alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and aromatic compounds. Now, we're going to review alkanes, alkenes, and alkynes in section uh, 25.1, and we'll save aromatic compounds for 25.2. Remember, alkanes are carbon-hydrogen bonds, which have all single bonds. Alkenes are, again, just carbon-hydrogen. They contain at least one double bond. And alkynes, again, are carbon and hydrogen. They contain at least one triple bond. Alkanes are known as saturated compounds because they have a maximum amount of hydrogens on them as possible. So a, all the single bonds result in a saturated hydrocarbon. So for example here, we have an example. We have one, two, three, four carbons linked together. Do you guys remember how to name this? Remember, it's the prefixes for naming organic compounds is mom eats peanut butter. Meth, mom, eats, eth, peanut, prop, butter, butte. Meth, eth, prop, butte. After that, the, the prefixes stay the same. You have penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. So you can see that we could write 1, 2, 3, 4, butane as this or this. And typically, we use the more condensed version here on the bottom right simply because it's, it's cleaner and saves us time. So remember, mom eats peanut butter, and then we have pentane, hexane, heptane, octane, nonane, decane. The boiling point increases with chain length, so that is why typically you see methane, ethane, propane but as gases, butane as a liquid, octane as a liquid. Typically, we have sp3 orbitals. We have a uh, sigma bond. And then remember, isomers are the same mole molecular formula, but they are bonded in a different order. So here we have pentane, isopentane, neopentane, and you can see how everything is bonded in a different order. We have butane and isobutane. Every, there, it's still butane, but it's bonded differently. And also, you can see that based on butane or isobutane, the melting point and boiling points of the structure change slightly. So isomers, just like isotopes, very similar to isotopes. Same molecular formula, different bond order. So when we name these here, this is what we have to do. Remember, the suffix tells us what compound it is. So the suffix tells us what type of compound it is. Is it an alkane, alkene, alkyne? The prefix is going to tell us how many groups we have attached. So if we do a very simple thing, a real quick refresher here, we're going to find the longest possible chain, longest possible connecting chain, which is here is six. So we have hex. Then we're going to number the carbons starting closest to our side chain. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six. We have one carbon off of our second carbon. So the name of this is going to be 2-methylhexane. Two 
Just a quick little review, a little refresher. Same thing here, how to name a compound. If we have more than one type of a substitute in the molecule, you're going to list them alphabetically. So for example here, we have one, two, three meth groups, and we have an ethyl group. So we're going to list them alphabetically. 3-ethyl, 2-4-5-trimethylheptane. We also can have cycloalkanes, which are circular ring structures. We have cyclohexane, cyclopentane, cyclopropane. Now we'll talk about aromatic structures. All right, carbons love to form five and six membered rings. All right, I, Alkanes are rather unreactive simply because we have a bunch of single bonds and sigma bonds, single bonds that are sigma bonds. So therefore, they make great nonpolar solvents. Alkenes. Alkenes, we have at least one double-double bond. They are unsaturated because they are not holding the maximum number of hydrogens. Now, if we look at an alkene, you're going to see that we have a pi bond overlap. And this creates geometric isomers, which differ in spatial arrangement. So you can see here that we have cis-2-pentene and trans-2-pentene. And what happens is, it depends where the H's line up. You see on the bottom one here, in the cis, the H's are both on the bottom. And on the trans, they're opposite of one another. And that's kind of how uh, trans fats uh, get their name, is based on their geometric properties. So you can see here we have methylpropene, 1-butane, cis-2-butene, trans-2-butene, and three different structures, and their physical properties are all different. When you are naming alkenes, remember that when you name alkenes, you are going to name where the double bond exists. So one, two, three, four, five carbons. You would start numbering closest to the double bond. So this is our first carbon right here. So this is one pentene. We're going to talk about how we identify trans, which our H's are opposite, and cis, which our H's are the same here um, a little bit later. So. Uh, cis, alkenes that have carbons in the chain on the same side, trans that have carbons in the chain on the opposite side. So, carbons are on the opposite side, cis, they're all on the same side. Difference between a cis and trans isomer. Now, alkenes, because of that double bond, like to react. Usually, the reaction of alkenes is an addition reaction or a synthesis reaction. Usually, they're going to be adding two atoms. They're going to be breaking up that double bond. And typically, what, uh, what you're going to have is that pi bond is going to be replaced by a sigma bond. So we have a two-step mechanism here. The first step being slow, the second step being fast. So the first step is you're losing that double bond and gaining one H, or gaining a bond here. And the second is when you gain that BR. We're not going to worry about uh, the uh, mechanism as much. And then lastly, when we talk about alkanes, alkanes contain at least one triple bond. They have sp hybridized, and they have a linear geometry due to that triple bond. Just like alkenes, they are also unsaturated. And we are going to name them the same way we named alkenes, where we're going to find our longest chain, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Doesn't matter here. And we're going to start... Uh, naming closest to the bond. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We have 2 pen time. And then the methyl group is off of the fourth carbon. So it is 4 methyl 2 pen time. Nothing changes with alkynes. Alkynes will undergo the same reaction that alkenes do. Uh, again, you're replacing that sigma bond, excuse me, you're replacing that pi bond with a sigma bond. And that is where we're going to stop for section 25.1. Uh, we are going to uh, t pick up our talk on organic chemistry and aromatic compounds in 25.2. But remember, alkanes, alkenes, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes. Alkanes are single bonds, alkenes are double bonds, and alkynes are triple bonds. This concludes section 25.1.